I always think that the first few chapters of the Bible, Genesis, are designed to explain the world. You know what I mean? It's a kind of why we're here, what's this about, and what's the meaning of being a human being? And if that was the question, I think the answer really comes in verse 26 of Genesis 1, where the first story of creation comes in. Let us make man in our image. So the way we're introduced to, you know, this kind of dichotomy between what is human and what is divine is joined together. And the picture of God is plural. You see that in the pronoun, let us make man in our image is so intriguing so interesting to think of god not as a whole group of of gods but as a relationship somebody said in the beginning was the relationship and we're brought into it we're brought into this circle of relational reality so these ancient people were explaining the world maybe sort of like father to son saying, well, it works out like this son. He said, you know how you are brought into the world and you, you know how babies are born and how we're part of one another. Well, it's like the beyond is in the midst that God, God is another word for reality, for everything. And you and me are part of that. We're nurtured and brought into that. Well, Dad, who's God? Well, he's the father of us all. He created. So we're not talking about gender here. We're talking about ontology. We're talking about explaining the world from a human divine connectivity. In the beginning was the relationship let us make man in our own image. So, so it's the first hint that we human beings are going to be brought into a relational, participatory and shared life, that the way of living is to be aware of God. Isn't that cool? Isn't that interesting? And that secret is somehow planted within our deepest identity and slowly reveals itself if we're attentive. I think uh, Jane Fonda once said, it's like a, a reverence humming in me. How interesting, how powerful. You see, it's sort of planted into our DNA. It's not earned by our behavior. It's not a matter of group membership or ritual or something. It's something that is recognized or realized. And more than anything else, it's like falling in love. It's like coming into a powerful new relationship that's somehow there already. When we're ready, we'll be overwhelmed by the mystery of our own humanity. And we'll know that we're standing under the same waterfall of love, of mercy as everyone else. And this is the picture right there at the center. It, it always astonished me when I was a, uh, working as a pastor in, in different churches, how badly people thought of themselves. And, you know, to be honest, sometimes I, I, helped, <laughs> I helped that along. Oh, dear. <laughs> it just seemed to make it worse because I come from a sort of a tradition of claiming of, of stressing original sin i still i still would in a sense i still think that the world is twisted and corrupted and in deep deep need of grace but that's not where the bible starts the bible starts with original blessing original human dna made in the image of god let us and we're brought into that fellowship Right at the end of the Bible in Revelation 3.20, there's a picture of, uh, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, we will come in and eat with them. We will have fellowship. It's like the Bible begins and ends with that sense of fellowship, of, of relationality that we're part of. And the middle bit 
from A to Z, the middle bit is to do with our loss and our redemption and our recapture. But at the beginning and at the end is that sense of fellowship with God. But what the Bible promises in, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, behold, what manner of love, you know, we are children of God. That is who we are. It's something very powerful, something very wonderful. You can't change it. It's not psychological worthiness. It's a substantial self worthiness that can't be gained can't be lost it's who we are we are made in the image of god this is gospel and when that image when that image becomes our operational reality we're changed we're changed this is gospel this is the best kind of great good news we're human beings we belong together. That re relationality makes us one family. Imagine there's no countries. Imagine there's no heaven. Imagine, imagine there's no separation. Imagine there's no differentiation between us. Imagine there's no religion. It all comes down. You've gone up river. You've come back to the source and you find this shared reality. We're made in the image of God and we're all in it together. I'm convinced that so much guilt and negative self-image, self-hatred, self-preoccupation occurs because we take our cues and identity from a competitive and comparing and contrary world. We live at odds. We live in the light of Genesis 3 tells us the story of humans resisting and rejecting this relationship. But this is where we start and this is where we have to come back if we're going to make it. So many of us build our whole self-image on whether we're like successful or good looking or, or whether we see ourselves as losers or winners. But all these things are just words that human beings create and it won't work. We have to find our true self and our true self is right here at the beginning. In the beginning, God said, let us make man, mankind in our own image, our image. And that is who we are. And that is lesson one in explaining the world. God bless.